What is up, YouTube? It's your girl, Evelyn, and it is finally that special time of year when your favorite YouTuber makes a video about the three lesbian Christmas movies that don't suck. This year, I thought I'd do something a little different and compile into one video every lesbian Christmas movie ever made. The list is broken down into four categories. The first is actually gay Christmas movies. These are films in which the main characters are gay and the plot revolves around Christmas. The second is Christmas specials. These are TV shows or web series that have special Christmas episodes. The next category is movies set during Christmas but aren't actually about Christmas. And this category is Carol. Last and least is A Sprinkle of Gay. These are Christmas movies featuring queer characters in strong-ish supporting roles. Also, quick shout out to my fellow YouTuber, Amanda Costner, whose lesbian Christmas video introduced me to several movies I'd never heard of and I definitely stole for this video. Oh, this bitch. Top or bottom? Uh, what was that? Looking for Her is the newest lesbian Christmas movie on the list. It literally came out last week. And it's about a woman who hires an actress to pretend to be her girlfriend instead of, you know, having an honest conversation with her parents. It is not that simple. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that the writer, director, and star of this film is also the writer, director, and star of City of Trees, another lesbian Christmas film that I'll be covering a little later. Also, the love interest in both movies is played by the same actress. And look, I am well aware aware of the indie filmmaking struggle, but why don't you just hire somebody? I will be reviewing Looking For Her over on Patreon soonish, so if you're a patron, be on the lookout. And you can currently stream Looking For Her completely free on Tubi TV. Excuse me? I'd like to talk to you for a second about, uh, the, uh, uh, I like your antlers. Oh. Under the Christmas Tree is a Lifetime original Christmas movie, and it feels like a Lifetime original Christmas movie. Now, that is not a compliment, but also as someone who was raised by the Lifetime Movie Network, it's not not a compliment either. Alma and her parents run a Christmas holiday store that somehow still manages to turn a profit in the age of Amazon, while her love interest, Charlie, has the best job I've ever heard of. She literally travels from town to town picking out Christmas trees. Like, who do I need to f to get that job. Anywho, Alma and Charlie meet, sparks fly, trees become obstacles, Ricky Lake bakes a lot, and I mean a lot. Basically, this movie is exactly what you would expect. Although I do think they went a little too hard on the background Christmas music, but that could just be a me thing. You can currently stream Under the Christmas Tree on Hulu. You've always been my constant. You've always been Gabby and Jenny. I want this night to end. We'll always have tomorrow. A New York Christmas Wedding is a movie that puts a rather unique spin on It's a Wonderful Life. On the eve of her Christmas Eve wedding, Jennifer is visited by her guardian angel, who shows her what life would have been like had she pursued her romantic feelings for her childhood best friend. I will say, A New York Christmas Wedding is the most ambitious film on the list. Like, it tries really hard to do a lot of things. Granted, it doesn't do many of them well, but I love that they went for it. You can currently stream A New York Christmas Wedding on Netflix. Do you know how painful it's been to watch the person that I love hide me? I am not hiding you, I am hiding me. Happiest Season is the best lesbian Christmas movie that has ever been made. It's a fact. That's not to say Happiest Season is perfect. We all know it's not, but it is literally the golden standard when it comes to lesbian Christmas films, and it's still available to stream on Hulu. You could have married the perfect woman. I mean the perfect woman. Look, I know. Shh. Are you having fun? years after its release, I still haven't watched Season of Love because I think we can do better than that. Courtesy of professional lesbian Christmas movie maker Kristen Baker, Season of Love seems to be kind of like a lesbian love actually. The plot follows various couples who are coupling during the holiday season, which is the exact plot of Love Actually. So there you go. You can currently rent or purchase Season of Love on telofilms.com. Listen, I don't want to get all Mariah Carey on you or whatever, but all I want for Christmas this year is someone to share it with. Now, it could just be my love of all things Western, but I thought Christmas at the Ranch was kind of cute, if not incredibly cheesy. Haley is a former country girl turned city girl, while Kate is a ranch hand who works for Haley's family. And let's just say they don't like each other. But of course, due to circumstances, Haley and Kate end up spending a lot of time together. And you know what happens when you put lesbians together for an extended period of time. 
Christmas at the Ranch is currently available to stream on Tubi TV. Okay, Rules. One, no PDA. Yes. Two, help in the kitchen. And three, no sexy skin. We should button you up. But really? For all of you fancy film festival hopping cinephiles, the Syed Family Xmas Eve game night is still making the festival rounds. Unfortunately, I live in a city devoid of culture, so I haven't been able to watch it. The short film is about a Pakistani Muslim woman who brings her Puerto Rican girlfriend home for the first time during her family's annual holiday game night. I will say, the trailer looks cute, funny, and quirky. So for those of you who've had a chance to watch it, please let me know in the comments what you thought. Fuck you, Sophie Michaels. Oh, hey, it's Sophie, look who it is. City of Trees is about a woman who returns to her hometown for the first time in years and runs into a popular girl from high school who she had a huge crush on, yada yada yada, there's Christmas trees and mistletoe and so on and so forth. I reviewed City of Trees quite a while ago on my Patreon and it was not my cup of tea, but I do know that a lot of queer women really like it. And I think that's because this movie speaks to a very specific demographic of queer women who relate to it in a way that I do not. City of Trees is currently available available on VOD, and it's only like 99 cents on Amazon Prime. Holiday Help Desk is yet another Christmas short, this one about two tech workers who find love while working on Christmas Day. Now, I'm guessing the plot is a bit more cutesy than that, but I haven't watched Holiday Help even though it is currently available to rent. And look, I really don't mean to be so hard on these micro-budget indies, but this movie looks like it was shot on an iPhone and not a new iPhone. Also, the B-roll looks like it came from Paxels, but if you don't want to trust my uninformed opinion, which you definitely should not, you might want to check out Amanda's video because like a responsible YouTuber, she did in fact watch Holiday Help Desk before making a video including it. Becca's coming home for Christmas. Isn't it wonderful? They were so good together. You can't be around Becca because it's too hard for you. Professional lesbian Christmas movie maker Kristen Baker is back at it again, this time with Marion Gay. Now, I just covered Marion Gay in my last video, so if you want to know more about it and how to watch it, definitely check it out. The buzziest Christmas special of the year has to be the Stupid Wife Christmas special. Now, for those of you who don't know, Stupid Wife is a Brazilian web series about a very attractive woman who gets amnesia and forgets her equally attractive wife. Now, obviously there's more to the plot than that. In fact, I made an entire video about the first season if you wanna check it out. Currently, the Stupid Wife Christmas episodes are being released weekly for purchase and weekly-ish on YouTube. Now, I have been watching the Christmas special and well, it's, it's just like the show. In fact, I'm currently doing episode breakdowns over on my Patreon, so if you like the show, come hang out and we can chat about the Christmas special. My grandma used to always have this saying, and I never understood what it meant until I was ready to get clean. And her words were, baby, trouble don't last always. In 2020, Euphoria released a pandemic Christmas episode called Trouble Don't Last Always, back when people, you know, still liked the show. Yikes. <laughs> the episode itself was melancholy as f and immediately became one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. It is super gay and super sad, and apparently that is just what I like. I did recap the episode back then, and it's somewhere floating around this channel, so feel free to check it out if you want. But if you haven't watched the Christmas episode, I cannot recommend it enough, and you can stream Euphoria on HBO Max. Would you like to come visit me this Sunday? Yes. It's Carol. You've seen Carol. But if you want to watch Carol again, it is currently streaming for free on Tubi TV, Pluto TV, Roku TV. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much streaming everywhere. Yeah. Now, I'm going to speed run this last category because while a sprinkle of gay is better than no gay, it's still just a sprinkle. Netflix's Let It Snow is about a group of harmlessly rebellious teenagers who spend Christmas Eve getting into all types of wholesome shenanigans. Dory is the gay in the movie, and she even gets a cute little romance subplot of her own. Rent is a holiday musical with a couple of queer ladies thrown in, but it's also kind of a downer, so watch at your own risk. Anna and the Apocalypse is yet another Christmas 
this musical. And while the queer lady in this movie is a strong supporting character and even has a love interest of her own, we never actually get to meet her girlfriend. Everybody's Fine is a 2009 flick about a father who goes on a road trip to visit his ungrateful children for Christmas because they refuse to come home, because they're ungrateful. The sliver of gay in this movie is truly a sliver, but it's a Shane sliver, so. That's nice. Ghosting the Spirit of Christmas is a surprisingly decent Christmas movie about ghosting someone by literally dying. Also, the queer character in this movie is essentially the second main character and even gets a full romantic subplot of her own. The Christmas Lottery is about three sisters who come home for the holidays, but not for sappy reasons like love and togetherness, but because their parents won the lottery and they want their cut. Entitled, ungrateful children. Also, one of the sisters is gay and apparently Apparently, her storyline is pretty prominently featured. This is another movie Amanda covered in her video, so definitely check out her review if you're interested. An Unexpected Christmas comes courtesy of Hallmark, the lesser of the Christmas movie factories. Now, as a rule, I don't watch Hallmark movies because, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. but apparently this one has a strong supporting lesbian character. So. There you go. Every Time a Bell Rings is yet another Hallmark movie with yet another minor lesbian character. Um. Good job. Now, I will concede, Hallmark has a boy gay Christmas movie coming out this year, so. That was cool, I guess. That is it for the video. I wanna give a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Vey, Connor, Levi, Olivier, Fix, and Audrey. I love you. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to let me know which lesbian Christmas movie is your favorite and I'll see you in the next one.